if you're if you're joining us and you feel like it, um, put your name and your institution in the chat. I think that's a really nice way to kind of create community in this space where we can't uh, see each other. This is a Zoom webinar, and so that's that's the one mechanism that we have. When you do it, though, make sure you've set that little blue box to all panelists and attendees, so that we can all see your name. Thank you, Latvia, for putting that up. Um, everybody is just joining us. This is the these are the parameters of this space. Introduce yourself in the chat. Make sure you've got that blue box toggled over to all panelists and attendees. Um, you can use the Q and A feature to ask questions as usual. You can um, chat as always, um, but your microphone and your video is disabled for now. So we've got. We've expect a fair number of people in here. Um, there is always closed captioning available to you, um, enabled on demand on your device. Uh, you just need to click that little CC live transcript button at the bottom. And this session is being recorded. Welcome everyone. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Tina from, from St. Clair. Oh, it's great to see colleagues from St. Clair here. Hi, Terry. Terry, who I now know from being grilled on internet radio yesterday. Thank you very much, <laughs> Terry. Yeah. yeah, subtle, but always grilling, secretly grilling. Right. <laughs> well, it's kind of an inside joke because we were talking uh, appliances and- uh, Oh yeah. And one of the opening rejoinders was your favorite COVID appliance. So oh, so waffle else? maker? Waffle maker, yes, and it's curling, but also the instant pot, which oh, we then right. had a really interesting discussion about, right, right. you know, invention, innovation, because the instant pot is a Canadian thing, oh, invented I didn't by know Canadians. That. Yes, Nortel engineers, I think ex Nortel engineers. Nice, huge contribution. It's like insulin, instant pot. <laughs> this goes on. Canadian innovation. Canola. <laughs> Canola. Hi, Julie. Oh, I'm so glad that that's such a nice comment from Julie. Lamenting this is coming to an end. You know, Julie, we had a long, long conversation at Campus Ontario about the appropriate length of the conference. And when we decided to add in breaks and, and musical guests and all those sorts of things, it's extended to three days. Um, but really, really glad to hear that that um, it's gone by quickly and, and it's felt like um, like a pretty seamless experience in that respect um because we talked about it a lot it's some really interesting conversations about what the right length is so here we are on day three and you know usually the last day of a conference is a shortened day uh which i always find really nice usually because people need to travel right that's what we would always do at tests like all of our colleagues from northern ontario got to get back to northern ontario before it gets too dark to drive and fly and all those sorts of things. So um, so we would always end it early, but um, this year is special because we, we've got uh, this wrap up session um, with Robert and then we've got uh, a strategy planning session, um, a sprint for eCampus Ontario. And so you might've noticed the theme, you know, we've been going through the agenda and we can kind of starting to talk a little bit more about eCampus Ontario throughout this day, because we're, we're hoping to ladder into um, some important conversations about the future of the sector, the future of education, um, and the future of this organization and supporting those efforts. So um, I've got my Campus Ontario sweatshirt on for this wrap up session because um, I'm going to be grilling Robert a little bit on some of his impressions of the conference. Um, and then we're going to be, you know, hoping that you're all going to join us for the strategy sprint session that's going to be starting at 2.30. So Robert, um, you, you're an, a fellow English major. I know that. True, fellow yes. Fellow English uh, master's student. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. My first two degrees were in literature. Right. You and I both. So you must be familiar with the famous French novelist and essayist Marcel Proust, I'm assuming. Indeed, yes, I've, <laughs> I've heard tell of this author. Yeah, so um, there's this great concept called the Proust Questionnaire. So I want to give you uh, the Proust Questionnaire Test 2020 uh, revamp, if that's okay with you. And I, okay. and I want to encourage everybody who's with us today and who is currently in the chat 
to throw your answers in there as well, because this isn't um, this isn't just about about Robert's ideas and his cat. That's my cat Crackers. She's Aww. going to help me with the uh, with answers. <laughs> Crackers has been enjoying all the and entertainment as well. I know. She has, so, yeah. um, Robert, one word to describe Tess. Inspiring. Anybody else in the chat? One word to describe Tess. Pop it in there. Um, affirming. Affirming. Oh, wow, Jess, nice. that's great. Anyone else? It is. Um, for me, it's um, it's colorful. Um, and nice. and you know, especially with all of the different voices that that we have in Tess this year, all of the different um, artists that we had, it just was like a absolute rainbow to me. Um, and oh, grounding, nice, stimulating I, from Sadia, that's great. I like your your use of the term colorful because, of course, you know we we think about colors and and um, diversity and inclusion and and decolonization certainly top of mind for us here. Um, yeah. But if we think about broader uh, conceptions of uh, diversity, it's nice to think about colors uh, because you know colors are complementary, uh, and there's there's all a lot of them, and they're all great. Absolutely. So, oh, connecting as well. That's great. So, next question is, who's your favorite artist? Oh, I got to go with classic roots. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a tough one. Evangelia Kemptes, she was great. Her guitar was playing amazing. was great. Yeah. She broke into that mad rendition of uh, Creep by Radiohead Creep. at the end, yeah. which which I thought was pretty good. Um, but classic roots. I love the fancy dancing and the DJing. When I was a kid growing up in Saskatchewan, we would go to powwows all the time with our Indigenous friends and community members. And uh, the fancy dancing was always fun because it well it was fancy and and it was you know special colorful um, yeah. and when the the dancers would really you know pour it on, uh, but I really just loved his his mashup. Um, I was tweeting back and forth with him, um, and I can't remember what he called it techno powwow or powwow techno or something like that. Uh, it reminds me of I've seen the, a tribe called Red a couple of times in, yeah. in concert, and it's that kind of. Uh, you know, mashup of happy type music, but also, I mean, particularly with the tribe called Red, you know, really calling to uh, to the fore the issues of uh, of colonization and the importance of decolonization through music. So, uh, great, uh, great addition. They were all yeah. great. I loved all the the artists. What about yeah. you? Favorite? Um, it's classic roots too, as well. I mean, you know, my the inspiration, the inspiration for the word colorful started with him. Um, and that, um, and the, just the, the pure unbridled joy of that experience. And then, you know, this morning, um, when he was doing his mixing and, uh, and there was a tweet from Jess O'Reilly in the Twitter stream where she was like, I was dancing to classic roots and brushing my teeth and like, hey, you know what, maybe these online conferences are okay. Like maybe this is, you know, and that really to me is like just such a great um, takeaway from this whole experience that everybody just like jumped in, was totally fine with this new format, um, was open to finding these new spaces where, you know, where we could be creative and connect with each other. And, um, you know, this is the same tweet that I saw from Sarah Wendorf on day two, where she took a picture of her breakfast. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> wow, great food at the conference. You know, like that, um, that is so creative. Cause that's like, this is the thing I love about going to conferences. I really love the food. I am gonna make my own internet version of this experience and we share it with others <laughs> um and there was a whole ensuing hilarious threat that came out of that but um but yeah that that to me was just gold that's, that's well said yeah um and the coffee and the coffee yeah so you know there's things we miss there there's there's a little bit of grief over our inability to see each other in person to have those Mm -hmm. um, those really uh, authentic moments, um, but but you know we're resilient and we find creative ways to to do that anyways, um, and that was just well, I think so it, it, great. Yeah, and that's an important point. I mean, resilience is obviously key, and you know at a time when the 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 leaders that of of the sector, are, you know, you collectively who are attending this conference, we need to help guide our institutions through a lot of change. And it's important for us to take that moment ourselves to uh, to recharge and 
and uh, be resilient and and uh, as we were told in the on the first day uh, by Dahlia the you know the need to get outside and just to breathe I thought that was really yeah. good yeah so what was your um your laugh out loud moment then from Tess uh, well it's got to be this morning when I was uh speaking about the strategy and my landline started ringing during the presentation <laughs> uh, I mean I know I was like just turn it off voice. Robert just just Press it's end. over there. What I couldn't really reach it, and <laughs> it was uh, the thing is like it's only actually my mother-in-law and my mother who who uh, who know that number. That and the CRA who calls me to tell them that I owe them money. Oh, and um, you're going to jail. Those yeah. calls. I'm going to jail. That's the one. Yeah. 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 Or or fix my Windows computer. Um, but yeah, no, that was my mother-in-law calling to say that she saw me on the interwebs and uh, did I know this? So I thought that was a, that was a laugh out loud moment. What can you do though? <laughs> good okay best tagline from the conference uh i'm going to go with something you said earlier which is contagious joy i think mm -hmm. we were texting back and forth and we were talking about uh, i think we might have been talking about classic roots actually at always this time. yeah um, he was uh, <laughs> uh jumping up a set today uh, and i think contagious joy is a really to me that's a nice phrase i mean there's many many things that people have said over the last several days that have really resonated with me uh, but I, I like that phrase of contagious joy because it, it's, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase what Ash is saying in the, in the, the chat. It's a humanizing moment, yeah. right? Like, and, and that was really important because his, it's, you know, it's funny to talk about contagion as well at a time when we're talking about a pandemic. Oh, yeah, but, good point. The good kind, though. Yeah, it, the good kind. It didn't even occur to me until just now, actually. Um, but it's something that we can do as as people, as humans, is to you know spread that kind of contagion. Keep your germs to yourself, but spread the joy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so great. I am. Um, what about you for a tagline? Oh, tagline um, has to be for sure. Um, education is experience, not a place. Like right. I'm taking that. That's those. We're going to make stickers or something out of that and like send them to everybody because, um, and that was um, uh, Kelly Brennan coming out of um, James Skidmore's session. And there was just this great kind of thing, something that happened in that session. And, and we had this kind of aha moment spurred by Skid's um, presentation that, that we really need to own that idea that, um, that, that we, that there's lots of spaces in between that, that formal learning experience where the learning happens. Um, and that is a strength of virtual learning. Right? It's a strength of, of our technology that, that I think we really need to own as kind of a counterbalance to, or a counterpoint to um, some of the rhetoric that is out there about this idea that the classroom is, the physical classroom, is the only place where where real true learning occurs. I think that's hugely important. Uh, I attended a couple of sessions today, actually on uh, uh, broadly speaking on diversity and inclusion, and ways in which we can support that. And it, it was Arza Arzu Singh, sorry, uh, who said yeah. something very similar that. Um, uh, I'm forgetting now what it was. I put it on the Twitter, but now I don't remember it. Um, the, you know, something about, you know, diversity and inclusion is not, it's not something that you do. It has to be part of everything we do. It's not this kind of bolt on thing over here. And I think it's, it's important when, we, particularly when we think about the, this idea of humanizing learning and the moment that we're in to support equity and decolonization more broadly, that it, it's not just something that, you know, oh, we're going to put this module over here and I'm going to put a check mark on that. No, it's got to be something that's part of, uh, uh, part of the entire, like in the entire environment of learning, mm -hmm. which speaks to both the informal and the formal aspects of learning, yes. which is what you were uh, referring to, that there's the formal curriculum and then there's the, you know, there's the curriculum of, of life. I actually think the word curriculum means life or living, if I was to think back Ooh. to some course I took a long time ago. Um, but that idea that it's, that it's always active, and I, I thought that was, yeah. um, pretty important for us to keep in mind because it, it's hard to it's hard to be on a treadmill all the time like we i think our our natural impetus to say okay i'm i'm here and it's i mean we have to take time to rest and stop and take stock for sure um but you know th these moments of education are are i think and how we interpolate those moments 
into uh, all aspects of the of the experience or what's important. Yeah, absolutely. I just saw somebody but put our vulnerability is our superpower. Yeah, from, that was from Julie from, from yesterday. Julie, yeah. yeah, that's great. And and Terry says humanizing learning, humanized learning is a tagline in and of itself um, that people can take forward. Good. Okay, this is really good. Um, okay, your tearing up moment. Um, I want to go with the session that I saw on LGBTQ and thinking yeah. about um, uh, nursing and um, how to teach. I think they were framing it as cultural competence for nursing students. And to me, I was thinking, I guess for me, it was about, because um, I, I asked a question about this in the, in the Q&A after, uh, because it wasn't something necessarily the big focus of the presentation, but it was about elders. Uh, and it reminded me that I read something in the Globe and Mail a while ago about, um, uh, it, the feature was on a gay man who had, who had spent a lot of his life in the closet and then was able to come out. Uh, but then when uh, he had to check into a long-term care facility, felt that he had to go back in the closet again yeah. uh, because the environment was not receptive to, uh, to who he is. And uh, so when I was listening to them speak about that, um, I, that was kind of had a profound impact on me because I mean, those are those, like everybody's, everybody has vulnerability and vulnerable moments. And yes, that is our superpower. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, it's really important for us uh, to, to have empathy and think about what that means for, you know, for in this case, that person going into that long-term care facility because he has to. So kudos to the to the group that's doing that work uh, to figure out how can we teach that to uh, to our students, teach those teach empathy uh, to our to our students, such that we can continue to embrace diversity and you know all the colors of the rainbow, as it were, yeah. uh, in all aspects. Because I think that's part of our responsibility, which is to um, which is to you know help society come to terms with things, new knowledge, new ways of being, of course, and, and that means there's a lot of differences of opinion. Uh, Lutfia just sent me a, a text. Thank you very much, Lutfia. That was Marion and Jane uh, yeah. who had done that, uh, done that session. But to me, that was, I was, that was a particularly moving moment, partly because of what they were talking about, but partly because of what it made me think about as well. So, what about you? <laughs> Well, I'm just noting that Sadia Rose says in the chat that Dr. Ivan Joseph, the idea of him inviting him, sharing about how he invited students to his house, she says that did it for her. Um, just that mo those moments of of kind of re real reaching out and connection. Um, I was thinking about the 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 session with um, Jane and Marion as well, um, and and I think you you certainly were not alone in your reaction to that because. Um, you know, I think we all know somebody who who has been um, at some point in their life poorly served by um, by the system, and in that particular case, it was healthcare. Uh, but we, you know, it's every system. It's and and we all know those examples. Um, and and you know, I think for me, the penny really dropped in that moment where it was like, you know, the way to fix this is by teaching people about these things. And I love what Marion and Jane did there because you know, they talked about the importance of verbal and nonverbal cues. So much of this is not, cannot be learned in a book, right? It's experiential. And so one of the best ways that they've, that they've found to do that is through a simulation. Mm -hmm. Um, there was so a related important. point, to, if I could, I'll just say the um, uh, Kehenti Hornmiller and Allie Davidson, yes. um, looking at that, uh, from Carleton University, talked about um, collaboration, community building, and the Haudenosaunee Foundations, and and that was really really inspiring. They they had this great uh, framework for how they were talking about. Um, I'm going to get this wrong. Collaborative. Uh, collaborative Indigenous learning bundles, which they encapsulated as, as living knowledge. So it's not like it's yeah. it's a thing that, that we know, it is a way of knowing, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but they also started by uh, quoting uh, Marie Sinclair from the TRC uh, commission report that you know, education got us to where we into this mess and education will get it's us out get of, those are my words. Yeah. yeah. Um, paraphrasing, but I, I do think it's important for us to recognize our 
responsibility. We have that ability to respond. And that's, I think, a really crucial thing. That's one of the things that I, that I took away. Uh, Santa Ono's talk yesterday was another good example of uh, you know, his five, five lessons for, um, for getting through these kinds of situations. I, so I think there's a, I've, I've learned a lot these last couple of days, certainly about the capacity of our community and, and the wealth of experiences and expertise that we have, but also I would say our capacity for resilience and to, to work together to really in some respects rebuild, but uh, continue the, you know, the project that we have, which is to make the world a better place. That sounds trite, but I, I really believe that. Yeah. So taking it back to the E, what are we gonna yeah. be doing? What are we gonna be doing at 2.30? Uh, at 2.30, 30? oh, strategy. Yes, of course, that's a thank you. I was uh, in a reflective moment. Um, so 2.30, um, we're going to be uh, spinning up our very first uh, sprint. Um, this is part of our second sprint cycle, of course. Um, and we have, I think, about 50 or so people that have signed up. Yeah. Um, maybe the 38 attendees that are here will also, uh, or are already signed up. But I think it's an important moment for us to really start to figure out how can we, how can, like, what are the practical things that we can do uh, as a sector to, to move things forward? I telegraphed that a little bit this morning when I, um, was talking around about the time when my telephone rang, uh, and Anna Boyden, I, I think she's on this um, on this call. Hi, Anna. Uh, did just a great job of outlining today uh, many things. First of all, what we have learned collectively about the uh, the environment in which we are, and really how we can best leverage that uh, to go forward. And uh, as Anna said, uh, I met Anna for the first time this summer when I was inbound to uh, Campus Ontario. Um, and uh, we very quickly discovered um, shared affinity for the prairies, for music, uh, but also for, uh, you know, open communication. And uh, I uh, just want to say to Anna, thanks a lot uh, for being awesome, because it's been a great collaborative relationship that has got us here, and I think will take us to where we need to go. So come and join us at, uh, at 2.30 if you're interested. Yeah. And um, and I'd love to for us to just circle back um, because this is actually the this is a technically the last session of Tess. Where where <laughs> that's kind of sad. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to get my fix for like opera coming up, but um, now I'm inspired to find out. So um, I wonder if if you could just kind of um, you know help us run through. Um, you know, some of the key takeaways um, from that, that eCampus Ontario is like going to kind of bundle up and carry forward, um, starting maybe with where we started, starting with where we started with the voice of the learner um, and, and, and that idea of listening to learners and learning from learners. Um, how are we going to, how are we going to take that forward? I think you may appreciate this from a literary perspective. The end of our exploring is to arrive from where we started and know it for the first time. Um, and I, I think in many respects, you know, for sure, we, our, our, our job, if you will, if you think of it that way, begins and ends with the learners. And we're all learners. Like that's one of the things that's been emphasized to me, re-emphasized. Um, and so for sure, starting with the learner is, uh, is very important. And, and Figuring out um, well, and that was a great way to start the start the conference actually, because that was one of the best things I think I've ever seen at a conference. To really hear how people have been impacted, how the learners have been impacted by the uh, by COVID nineteen uh, and the the rapid shift to online, and I and I think if I take a step back for a second, the the opportunity that we have is to first of all to to reflect on on the moment that we're in right now. Um, so we have come through the last six or seven months um, since the pandemic, uh, you know, hit, and, and we did this massive pivot into online. Let's not forget that before that, this community has been working for five years to build the muscles and the muscle memory for how to do this. So you know, a lot went well in that pivot. And a lot went well because we have, as a community, been exercising the muscles. Uh, I'm not a very sporty person, so bear with me on the metaphor. 
uh, and, the, and the muscle memory of what, what it means to be able to do this kind of work and to do this kind of work well, particularly while thinking about the, the voice of the learner. And, and uh, that has, has come to the fore, um, I think, a lot. I mean, the last session that I think I was in was Anna's session, and she said the same thing. Like, it's, it's human-centered design. That's my formal training. Um, but, you know, our focus here is, is what we can do for the learner-centered design. So the moment of, you know, we've got the, the five years of history of eCampus Ontario leading and working with the sector to, to provide the environment and the muscle, muscle memory for, for doing that pivot, which has gone well. And then we all kind of headlong rushed into the fall term and saying, okay, well, now we've got to, we have to keep doing this because this isn't going away. And our opportunity now is to figure out how we do this at scale. Um, again, as Anna said, I mean, hybrid learning seems to be a thing that, you know, for those of us in the sector will know has been a thing for a while, but will will be with us always and to leverage the momentum that we have in order to create better, more inclusive learning environments for everybody, I think is important. And I'm reminded of something, uh, I think it was Judith Human said this, she was doing something about the uh, Americans with Disability Act many, many years ago. Um, and she said, I'm gonna get this bit wrong, but technology, for people without disabilities, technology makes things convenient. For people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. And we're in that moment where we've gone from the convenient to the possible. And it is in the moment of the possible where I think that that's our moment right now is to say, how are we going forward within the scope and realm of possibility? Uh, we don't have unlimited money uh, as, a, as a society. We, don't, we, have un, we have very limited resources and we've got massive healthcare challenges um, you know, still. And so you know, our job is to think within that framing, like what, again, just to repeat something, what can we do together that is going to move you know, that, the, the art of the possible, if you will, into um, you know, what is really going to be a more inclusive environment. And as the minister has said at the opening uh, to the conference, you know, truly create Ontario as a global center for digital learning. And I just wanna say, I mean, the history of this organization, uh, of this sector, of this community to get us here is why we are poised to be that global center of excellence. Absolutely. And that growth, you know, um, has been captured really clearly in the national survey um, over time, right, you know, started and we didn't start actually capturing that information until 2017. But, but it, it, it knew it understood and it referred back to that first initial investment that created eCampus Ontario that led to the creation of thousands of online courses and programs um, that have that have really kind of accelerated over the years in Ontario, you know, it keeps being the the uh, the province that has um, really grown the most and the quickest in that direction. And I think that served us really well when we were forced to move online. So that is absolutely true. But what you, what you, the other thing that you said is absolutely true, which is very clear from this conference, which is that there is still a boatload of work that needs to be done to kind of bring all of that work to parity for all of the people who, who it may be currently leaving out. So, um, mm -hmm. so there's a, there's a lot of, um, there was a lot of work that was done in the pivot that was done because of speed and a, and a lack of time that that we have an opportunity to kind of co go back to and make sure that it is incorporates everything that was kind of implicit in this conference and so that's what i hope that i mean there's so many people already doing such fantastic work that was massively evident um and i think it's incumbent on every single person who is at this conference to kind of go back to their institutions and spread some of this knowledge, share these resources, engage people um, in, a, in a kind way, in a thoughtful way, in a human way to kind of start to rethink some of these practices so we can get to a point where every single course is at that level. Every single online program is at that level. And like, you, like Arzu said, that it's implicit, that it's built in, that it's digital by design in a way that accounts for 
all of the um, the full spectrum of human diversity. So um, for sure. all of this is, there's such a strong foundation. There's such a unique opportunity ahead of us as a system. Um, one quick plug I, I that just, I need to make. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I, before you, I need to make a quick plug for the Student Experience Design Lab um, and this opportunity that is coming up. Um, and Chris, you need to pop that link into the chat for people to register right now um, because we're looking for educators to work with student designers to build a strategy for wraparound supports for Ontario students. So, Chris, think you're in here. I'm hoping you're in here. You got to drop that link in the chat right now because I don't have it handy. It's in the SXD Lab Twitter feed if anyone else is curious. If you're looking for a way to get involved tomorrow, that's how you do it. Robert, final words. Well, that, We've got two the, minutes. <laughs> so I would say a couple of things uh, in, in, the, in the two minutes uh, and I've just wasted 30 seconds. First of all, that XXD Lab is uh, very much analogous to the tech rover model that Santa Ona yeah. talked about. Yeah. Uh, right, and that's bringing the voice of the student to, to uh, and giving students jobs to help create the uh, the environment of the future. And, and just, uh, you know, we've heard, uh, I probably even said this, but I've heard at least two other people say this, you know, rising tide um, raises all boats. And in many respects, this conference to me is like a high tide moment, yeah. right? Where, where I feel, oh, this is, this is where we are as a community. Uh, and as somebody new to the organization, it was, it's been incredibly valuable to meet people and to learn more about uh, where we are uh, in our journey, but uh, you know that that kind of concept of this being a high tide moment, um, you know, really uh, kind of washed over me. I'm, I'm losing my metaphor now, um, <laughs> but I, I think it's important for us to to think about because it, it will ebb again, of course. But something you said is really key, which is that yes, we did the pivot. We got into the fall term and we started fixing what we didn't do, you know, maybe as well as we could have. And now we've got the opportunity to bake in quality to uh, bake in you know, uh, you know, more inclusion and decolonization and diversity, to bake in that, uh, the kind of components that we need in order to scale this and, and truly make the, the learning as good as it can be. Is online learning going to replace all learning? No, um, but as I said at the outset, virtual learning is real learning. Uh, my spouse, who's an expert in curriculum often and has taught me a lot about um, learning outcomes has said to me before when i was first learning about learning outcomes i was a prof and i was, had the syllabus and she said there's no learning outcomes and i said what's that and anyway um she said has told me many times there are always learning outcomes in any educational environment mm -hmm. don't we want to be the ones that outline what those are and i think that that's really important because it shows what our responsibility as educators are not to say that we know everything and everything but when we design these these those digital by design is important because it means that we're taking an artful and meaningful and an intentional approach to standing up the kinds of learning environments that are going to be as supportive as possible that will generate the kind of sticky knowledge that we need as well as the competencies and the and the core citizenship uh, competencies competencies that we want uh, so I'd just like to say thanks to everybody for the uh, for the opportunity to learn with you all. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's been just a fantastic, uh, a fantastic conference. And I would be remiss if I did not say to uh, Luke Lacasse and Lutfia and Daniel and the rest of the team who have been operating behind the scenes uh, throughout all of this, the entire eCampus Ontario team has just been exemplary. It's been a real all hands on deck. And I think that this has gone uh, just fantastically well. So thanks everybody for participating. And um, one final note, please tell us what you think. You will be receiving a feedback survey. Um, it's coming to your inbox. We really value your feedback. We incorporate it year after year. Um, it's critical to us for running uh, an, a conference, any kind of conference, any kind of event, but especially this year you know, because we went virtual, um, because we're trying it for the first time, and because your voice is so important to us in co-creating the next test. So please take a moment to, um, to complete that feedback survey. It's quite quick, promise. Thank you, Robert, for joining me hey, for the last wrap-up session. We're way over time, but I have one last thing to say. There's a micro-credential form coming up in February, <laughs> yes, of course. which will be like the next must-attend event of your calendar. I mean, maybe New Year's Eve is too, I don't know, but 
after New Year's Eve uh, in February is the micro-credential forum. That's right. More info to come on that. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. And uh, Feb Thanks, 26, everybody. thanks, Lillian. Thanks, Lillian. <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll see you in the strategy home, uh, communities. Yeah. Yes, and see you in the strategy. Bye.